Hey friends, I uh, hope you've been enjoying my um, songwriter series and songwriter sessions. I've been trying to uh, <clears throat> add one of those uh, every week uh, as I can. Uh, I've kind of got a little bit hoarse here for some reason. Uh, but <clears throat> we're going to press on anyway. I just wanted to uh, be able to uh, do another video. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a lesson. I've been really busy working on some other stuff. Um, working on a website to put up um, on my Texas Blues guitar series that uh, I've been trying to get out there and I'll keep you posted as that goes along but right now I wanted to answer some questions that I've had uh, for some some readers um, I'm gonna try to keep this short because it takes forever to upload and that's what discourages me more than anything from uploading videos is that it takes forever so I'm gonna not do a lot of talking uh, one one question that I was asked not too long ago was about the rhythm in four horses and, and that it was kind of hard to get a feel for that rhythm and so I was going to go over a little bit of that right now and see if we can work out some of those kinks uh, I'll play it for you and I'm using a microphone because I mean it just picks me up better I don't know how it's going to pick up how good it's going to pick up the guitar but we'll, we'll find out but uh, I'll just play a bit of it for you and then I'll give you like a basic rhythm that you can uh, work on so you don't have to feel like you got to do all this picking and everything. That's kind of how the strumming pattern goes. Uh, let's try to break that down a little bit and see what we've got here. Of course, you got the intro, but whenever you, the song starts, obviously when I'm singing it, I'm not going to be able to think and sing and pluck the exact same. Uh, <clears throat> the whole time, because it's more of a solo. And it stands out better as a solo instead of me having to do that through the rhythm. So here's the rhythm, and let's see if we can uh, come up with something here. It starts out in A minor. So on every walk-up note to the C, it's walking from A minor to the C. It's a down, up, down, up, down, up. When I hit the C, it goes to the alternating bass note, the G note there. The notes I'm hitting there are partially C notes, uh, or the C chord. when I'm in the G formation. And uh, it would sound repetitive if you did that all the time, so we'll see. So I added a little bit of a hammer on there, a little bluegrass signature sound. So the first time is the, and then a few more strums in the.
just so it's a one, two, three, four, and the strums in between. And uh, I've got a basic strumming video. Um, it kind of goes over some of these patterns, the down ups and all this stuff. I've got a couple strumming videos. If you want to go back and check those out to get you an idea of. over uh, some of that in some of those videos but let's go over the start from the top and I do that a lot just for feeling I add the extra upstrokes I'm leaving my C note down here if I didn't it would sound good but I'm already there anyway for the C so I might as well leave it there if I didn't add those upstrokes, it'll be kind of dull and bland, so I'll add the extra, the extra upstroke. Or the extra upstrokes again. We'll start all over. basically the same the whole way through and then when you go to the chorus I add that little note in there I use the pinky but you can come back with this this uh, ring finger if you need to it's just a, uh, a pull off but I'm bending it as I'm pulling it because it just adds a little bit extra uh, sinister sound to it. Add variations of that AF that was a bar chord. Just adds a little more dynamics, a little more drama to it. But uh, that's that. Um, I've got another question coming up because uh, I don't want to make this run long. But I hope that's helped you uh, figure out the the rhythm to Four Horse of the Apocalypse uh, song that I've got. And you can do a search on my YouTube page for that. If you don't know what that is, I may uh, try to give you a link to that. But um, hope you enjoyed that. Use some of that uh, strumming patterns as well uh, in some other playing. Maybe you've got another song in a minor key, or maybe you just got another song period, and you want to try some of those strumming patterns out or some of that some of that out. You can work on that. And the other thing I was going to say is um, when I go to the F, typically it's the F suspended. Like an F, but with that middle finger lifted, and most of the time, to help you out with an F chord, unless you're really, uh, if you're especially if you're struggling trying to learn it and you don't, you don't like that little bar there, I hardly ever use that bar. I'm just using that C shape with that F coming down here. That that pinky is going to come down underneath that. 
okay anyway um, not even gonna put worry about editing that out that just happens it's live folks um, but anyway that F if you'll notice I'm not you can hear that that's the major seven of the F chord what I'm doing 90% of the time when I'm going to an F chord is I'm, I'm using the bottom two fingers here to mute that, that string there. For one thing, it's hard for my pick to go past those fingers because it just feels awkward. So most of the time my pick stays above those fingers. So I've got like a, a, a what I might call a, a chord within a, a middle chord or within the middle strings here. You're not using the top strings and you're not using the bottom strings. You're using the four strings in between. And the whole time, if you'll notice when I'm picking, I'll just go through this one more time and watch my fingers down here when I get to that F in the chorus and see where they're, if, where they're at. And that'll help you out where you don't have to, I'm not even using the bar. But that F, I'm, I'm, I'm making that F, but I'm lifting that middle finger to get that suspension. That little G note. It's not G because it's on capo, but you know what I'm saying. It's an open string. Now another thing, you can let it ring if you want to. It just just depend on your personal taste, but like I said, when you're making an F, you don't really have to do the bar. You can just beat the bottom string, and I don't even I don't even hit it. If I do, it's very subtle. But there's your lesson for there, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get to the next question I had, and it's a good question by one of my uh, good friends, um, Gary Howard, Pastor Gary Howard on Facebook. So. Um, I'll get to his question next. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, continue to keep watching. Uh, pretty soon I'll have a, a newsletter up and running, trying to get it going, get some content out there, um, all about Texas blues, and so if you're excited about that, keep stay tuned, and I'll keep you informed on all that news as well. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, please um, check out all the links that I may have posted on these YouTube videos. They're there for your convenience, and uh, for you to keep informed on some of the the cool gear that I use and uh, different cool different areas so make sure I know YouTube defaults on the uh, videos uh, they just show like the first line of text in the link so just click on that little show info uh, area and you can see the whole description of the, the song and any links I may have posted in there uh, for your like I said for your convenience so I'm done talking uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time